Lecture 7, Forecasting Supreme Court Decisions, and this is uh, part 4, the last part of this lecture. In this part, we are going to have the random forest uh, method. The random forest method is actually a variation of the CART method, the CART model, uh, in order to improve uh, the prediction accuracy. Uh, random forest builds a large number of CART trees which each vote on the outcome uh, to make a final prediction. Okay, so that means uh, in random forests, uh, we will have a large number of trees uh, generated randomly in random fashion. And so since we have a large number of trees, so it's not interpretable. Okay, so here uh, we should make our decision about uh, which one is important to us, interpretability of the model or uh, the prediction accuracy. If the prediction accuracy is uh, more important to us, then we need to apply the random forest model. But if we need to have a model in order to be able to interpret the outcome, then uh, we have to go with the CART model. Okay. When we uh, say in random forest we have many card trees, it doesn't mean that we are going to run the card method uh, many times on the data set in order to have many trees. No, that's uh, not the case because in this case, all the trees would be the same, right? In random forest, uh, many trees, let's say for example, 100 trees. 100 trees are built based on randomly uh, selected subset of observations and also randomly selected uh, subset of independent variables. Then those uh, randomly selected independent variables would be used to split the randomly selected observations as the training data set. Okay? So the mechanism to, uh, to randomly select a training data set from the original data set is called the bag or bootstrap uh, sample of the data set. So that's uh, selecting randomly with replacement from the full data set. Okay. So uh, the bag or bootstrap uh, sampling is uh, selecting observations randomly with replacement. So let's have an example here. Let's assume that we have a five data points in our training data set labeled with one, two, three, four, and five. So now we are going to have uh, the boost, bootstrap uh, uh, process here to randomly select five observations. Okay. So the first one could be two, three, one, two, five. So see here we have two times the two. Since we have replacement, so we, we can have uh, repeated uh, observations, okay? So yeah, uh, and again, three, one, four, five, one for the second three, or four, four, two, one, five for the third three, and so on, okay? Like the CART model, we need to set the value uh, for uh, some parameters in the random forest model. The first is uh, the number of trees. So in R, uh, we have n tree parameter. Okay, so if we set uh, less trees, then maybe the full potential of the model might not be realized. So yeah, since the random forest is working uh, based on random fashion, so it's better to have large number of trees in order to uh, utilize the strength of the random forest method. Okay, and more trees take take a longer time to build, right? And typically, it's uh, set to a few hundred as the number of trees. Okay. The second parameter here is the minimum number of observations in a subset, and in R, it's uh, the node size parameter. Okay. So the good news here is uh, uh, random forest is less sensitive to parameters. So usually we can use the default parameters, and it's totally okay. Okay. And, but if we want to uh, test different parameter settings, we can apply the same approach of uh, 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 validation, which we use for the CART model. Okay. So now let's uh, build a random forest model in R for our 
data set. In R, we can use the random forest function to build a random forest uh, model. So same as uh, uh, the card and regression models, first we have the dependent variable here and the tilde sign and then the list of uh, independent variables separated by the plus sign. And the data would be a Stevens train, the parameter of N3 here, we have considered uh, 200 uh, as the number of trees and the node size as 15, okay? After building the model, uh, we can uh, predict uh, the outcome on the tests data set. So we call this as a Stevens predict uh, forest and so the predict function here steven as far as our model and the new data as a steven's test so since uh, uh, here we have a category called outcome uh, variable or dependent variable we need to build a table uh, as uh, our predictions and the true value of uh, the dependent variable okay so if we do that, we will have this outcome in R, and now we can uh, calculate the accuracy of the model. So here the accuracy would be uh, the true predictions, which would be 45 plus 73 over the total number of observations, or 45 plus 73 plus 20 plus 32. And then it would be 0 0.694. So yeah, it's pretty uh, good uh, accuracy for our model, okay? Okay, after having the details of uh, the card and random forest model, let's get back to the Martin's model in our case study. So uh, Martin uh, used 628 previous uh, Supreme Court cases occurred between uh, 1994 and 2001, okay? And then he uh, made predictions for 68 cases that would be decided in uh, October to 2002 term, so before it started, okay? Martin and his colleagues uh, recruited 83 legal experts in order to form uh, an expert panel to uh, make predictions over those cases and in order to be able to compare uh, the prediction results of uh, the statistical model, I mean the CART model, against the expert panel, okay? So uh, 71 uh, of academics and 12 uh, attorneys and also and from these uh, experts, 38 previously clerked for a Supreme Court uh, justice and 33 were chaired professors and five were current or former law school deans, okay? So uh, experts only ask the predict within their area of expertise, okay? So more than one expert to each case, and also they were allowed to consider any source of information, but not allowed to communicate with each other regarding their predictions, okay? And here we have the results for the 68 cases in October 2002. So as you hear the overall case predictions for the model, model's accuracy, it was 75%, while for the expert's accuracy, it was 59%. So as you see here, the model is outperform, outperforming uh, the expert panel, okay? And for the individual justice predictions, uh, the model's accuracy is uh, 67%, but the experts accuracy is 68%. So individual, we can say, okay, experts are uh, working slightly better than uh, the model, but in general, in overall, the model is out outperforming the expert panel, okay? Here we have the individual justice predictions for the nine justice we have in the Supreme Court. And for example, here for the first one, O'Connor, we see that how is the accuracy of the model against uh, the experts, right? And also here, but for, for example, for Stevens, experts had better accuracy than uh, the model, okay? Let's uh, wrap up the case by having the analytics edge here. 
uh, predicting Supreme Court decisions is very valuable to firms, uh, politicians, and also non-governmental organizations, depending on the case, because they can be prepared for future, right? They can forecast uh, the outcome, and based on that, they can plan for future. So uh, here we have a model that uh, predicts these decisions, and not only, not only uh, this model has better accuracy than the experts, but also it's much, much faster than the experts, right? So uh, in general, we can say the CART model that we uh, have here uh, is working uh, uh, on, on uh, high level details of the cases and it beats experts. But experts can uh, process much more detailed and complex information, right? But here we don't need to have those uh, level of uh, complex information only by having uh, the independent variables that we define here, we are able to uh, forecast the Supreme Court decisions. Okay, and that's it. Thank you.